So we're going to call the meeting of the Board of Public Works to order at 5.30 on April 25th, 2019. Uh, would, Diane, would you please call the roll? Mayor Donches. I'm here. Commissioner Ackerman. Here. Commissioner Pappas. Here. Commissioner Moriarty is absent and Commissioner Tees is absent. And we have Alderman Jetty, uh, who is our liaison from the Board of Aldermen. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the minutes of the Special Board of Public Works meeting of March 8, 2019. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's a different agenda. The motion passes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes of the Special Board of Public Works meeting of March 8, 2019. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Is there a motion on the minutes of March 28th? I'll move to approve the minutes of the, uh, uh, the Board of Public Works meeting of March 28th, 2019. Any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Now we have public comment. Does anybody from the public wish to address the board? If not, we will go on to parks and recreation. Mr. Caggiano is here. Uh, item A. Good afternoon, uh, Nick Caggiano, Parks and Rec Superintendent. I just wanted to give you a, bri uh, a brief update. Uh, uh, as many of you know, we've been tracking this pest, uh, this uh, tree pest that's been invading uh, from the Midwest to here. And for many years, I've been giving you updates. And sadly, I, I'm here to report that Nashua has finally made the list. Uh, the emerald ash borer is in the northwest quadrant of the city. Uh, and if you look at your map, uh, we're pretty much surrounded, and it's eventually going to uh, it's eventually going to take out the ash trees uh, as we know it. Uh, it's done. It started in Michigan. Uh, I've given you fact sheets before. Uh, they continue to work uh, nationwide on different ways of control, but it's very difficult. They haven't found anything, and what they're hoping for now is that a natural control happen, kind of like what's happened with gypsy moths in the 70s and early 80s. They, they overpopulated and created a natural bacteria that got them sick. And uh, that's the hope now. They're looking into natural bacterias that maybe they can inoculate the trees for. So I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, we've been talking about it for a few years, and I want to let you know. And what proportion of the trees do you think are ash trees? Uh, <laughs> We're in a, a beech maple oak forest in southern New Hampshire, and there is ash. It, a lot of the ash trees are uh, near rivers, water. We have a lot of water. So I'd say a good 20% of the trees, and, and that's just me guessing, 20% uh, uh, of the trees are, are ash. Uh, Commissioner Pappas. Um, I know at some point, I, I, I don't know how good of a track we kept of it, but we had volunteers that went through um, and kept track of city trees. Mm -hmm. I think we only did it for a year or two. I mean, it was kind of yep. heavy duty work. So I wasn't sure, number one, if you could use that information. And uh, my guess is it's probably outdated. It was a lot of years ago. Um, but my other question is if, if you're thinking that it's near the rivers and that sort of thing. Do you have do you have a sense of the way we might um, try to start replacing them with um, trees that may not? Not yet. Uh, the state really hasn't come out with a, uh, a recovery method. They're not in the recovery mode right now. They're trying to, they're in prevention mode. They're trying to come up with prevention. As far as your first question, the uh, we did do surveys, physical surveys, and that technology is probably 10 years old now, maybe even more. Yeah. And now they do it by satellite, the same way they look at street parking and street signs and things like that. So the Forest Service 
has a real good idea of the percentage of trees, uh, and they just do an overflight, and they can tell. So, so can, can I have a follow-up? So, so even if you aren't sure, and I, we aren't certain of the percentage, and the state hasn't come up with a plan, does that stop us from saying, oh, I think we're, we're, we're going to lose, lose X number of trees, so let's start planting them? We could. We just got to find the spots, and they have to go through the, what's the best word, the death process. So the trees, we haven't lost any. It's just been identified. So that's going to probably occur over a five-year period. And it might be a good idea to think about a replacement plan. We currently have a shade tree account, but I don't think it would be able to fund the mass uh, number of trees we'd need. But it's a good idea. So, so, so we would have to think in that in terms of our budgeting. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll keep you posted. I, I when I go to some meetings and conferences, they they update. This is a hot topic right now. Okay. So, and I'll update you as more information comes. Thank you, Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Superintendent, is there any communities in the state of New Hampshire taking a preventative measures whatsoever? No, the only preventative measure uh, which is in place is um, both Fish and Game and DES are monitoring uh, camp wood that comes out from other states. Right now, there's a quarantine on ash. You can't you can't bring ash into the state uh, because that's how it spreads. And just a quick follow-up question: Is there any? Um with the gypsy moth that was very visible. Mm -hmm. Can residents of the city of Nashua notice something very distinct? Very distinct. Uh, on the ash tree, uh, you'll see um, woodpeckers, and they'll leave very large. It's called blonding. There'll be these white sheets on the tree uh, pretty high up, and that's an indication that the borers are in the tree. Because the woodpeckers eat them. Yes. Interesting. Maybe we need more woodpeckers. There you go. All right. So other than the fact that the trees are going to die, there's no other damage to properties or anything to that effect? No, other than the loss of timber. And uh, the big effect nationwide is the baseball bat industry because, you know, bats are made of ash or maple and uh, – they're switching, they're going to maple just because of this pest. But the pest is only for, a, for ash. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Discussion? Is there a motion to accept the communication and place it on file? I move to accept and place on file. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Engineering. <coughs> I move to. Mr. Ducrin is here. Item A. I move to approve the residential and commercial wastewater service permits and fees as submitted. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B. I'll move to approve the purchase of manhole and catch basin castings, castings from Concord Windwater Works of Concord, New Hampshire, in the amount of $194,866.40. Funding is through Department 169 69 Wastewater Fund, Wastewater Activity Sewer Structures. And Mr. Dukin is here to address this. Oh, oh I thought you were a question. Sorry. Um, this is a typical um, addition to our paving program. We want to address all the broken, obsolete structures out there, catch basin grates, uh, sewer and drain manual covers. And um, so the wastewater fund will fund these replacements because that's a wastewater item. Um, so purchasing these will uh, has an advantage to the cost. Um, if we were to leave it up to the contractor to provide these and install them, we'd be a, a lot more. I was, I, I was happy to see that savings on that. Thank you. Yes. Discussion, questions? 
Alderman Jetty. Okay. So th these uh, these three bids are from companies that that supply these things. They don't make them, right? Are they no, no. These are these companies are pretty much. Uh, they just market these products. Um, sometimes they're the exact thing. Uh, sometimes they might be from different different manufacturers, all meeting the specs or standard construction specs. Okay, thank you. Just, Mr. Ackerman. Yeah, just curiosity. Do we recycle the old ones uh, to reclaim them for any sort of cost savings to the city of Nashua? Uh, yes, yes. We, uh, well, I won't say recycle, but we reuse. Um, <clears throat> those that are broken and are not reusable, they are brought to the landfill and they just join them metal heap. Um, those that have some kind of use, um, they're brought to the wastewater plant where they can be used, reused in locations that may need change uh, to be changed. For instance, as I said, they, if they're obsolete, meaning that they don't fit the size um, and they might be a, a unique size, the wastewater department may find a location where it can, just the grade itself can be Use the frame will be disposed of with the grate itself, and in the triangular ones, which are very unique to just Nashua, um, the practice that we have had for many years is that those are turned over to the um, his historical society, and they, I believe, they um, auction them, and so they, they use the proceeds for okay. for their own, you know, for their own needs. Terrific. Thank you. Sure. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, item C. A move to award the construction contract for the 2019 pavement preservation program crack sealing to seal coating ink of brain, brain tree mass in the amount of $143,865, Department 160 Admin Engineering Fund Bond Activity Paving. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'll start by saying, um, again, we are trying to make crack sealing as a normal part of a preservation of the pavement as recommended by the study. You might remember the study that was done in 2015 and then reported in 2016. Um, if we don't do this kind of preservation, uh, routine, what we call routine maintenance, um, our pavement, good pavement, will deteriorate much faster. Um, so a couple of years ago, we did another preservation technique called microsurfacing. Um, we think for us uh, that's still not, we have not um, convinced that it's, uh, you know, a, a good way until maybe we do some more pilot testing on that. But crack sealing, which we did, um, it has held up uh, very, very well throughout the city. And there are a lot of advantages to sealing your cracks. Um, you, you eliminate or reduce the moisture that will enter the pavement at, and that will deteriorate the pavement. Uh, that will deteriorate, especially by freezing and thawing and opening the cracks. Um, so, as I'm recommended by that study, if you do the crack sealing in a timely, a timely fashion, and you must remember our PCI range, right? Pavement Condition Index, zero to 100. You want to crack seal between 60 and 99, that are the upper ranges of the PCI um, scale. Um, and when you do that, you, what you essentially are doing is giving life to that pavement. So, you can crack seal a road that's say in a, say a PCI of 75 and bring that PCI back up into the 90s. Get, and therefore, it starts deteriorating from a much higher level. And, and so you can extend the life um, of, of, the, of, the, of the pavement. Uh, you expect that the crack sealant itself to last about three years. So a contest study, you can keep crack sealing every three years or so until the pavement itself, the overall pavement is gotten to a point that you do a further rehabilitation like mill and overlay and so on. So, so we have found that this is, uh, this is working for us and that's why we have another contract. Um, 
you might notice that we are kind of late in the game and getting out there doing this. Uh, it's been widely used by many communities and many states. Uh, the state of New Hampshire has been doing very large programs on, in major, on major highways. Um, talking about, uh, I think this year, they're looking at doing a hundred uh, million dollars in crack ceiling on uh, uh, roadways like 101 and I-89. And in the past couple of years, they've been doing similar programs on, on big highways. So that's the experience we are learning from, and therefore we want to keep um, advancing our program in this fashion. And uh, if you, the more that you can do in preventative, the less you'll have to do in full-scale rehabilitation. Mr. Pappas. So I just wanted to verify, we've never done that in the past, number one. And number two, uh, that, that, that was my recollection, because I remember years ago we were asking about that. And number two, microfiber, if you, you don't have to necessarily exp explain the process quickly, but if you have areas that that might have been done, because I did get a couple of complaints where someone said, oh, this looked great initially, and then all of a sudden it fell apart. Microsurfacing. Yeah, Is that's, that yeah. Called? Yes. So, was one. Okay. So we did three streets uh, two years ago, um, <clears throat> part of Main Nussable Road, River Riverside Street where our offices are. Yes. And then Bowview. Um, Middle Nussable Road, no, Main Nussable Road and Riverside have held up well. You will still see the cracks. Uh, it, 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 they've told us that the cracks will reflect. However, that pavement surface will last. So on those two streets, they are lasting. Um, both of you, on the other hand, we believe that wasn't a good selection. Um, the hill, yeah. It was too far gone. And, and together with the having mechanical problems on that day, they were applying the, the material. So that, that didn't work well for us. That's why we are not there yet in wanting to do more of that technique. Um, and there are others that are out there, but we, we want to take it slowly. Um, and, and that's cheaper than, that's significantly cheaper than Millenfill? Yes, that's cheaper, um, a lot cheaper. And you, uh, you, no, I'm say guaranteed, but you, they, you promised a five year uh, increase in life um, when you do microsurfacing. Oh. So we'll see, we'll see another three years for Riverside and th three years for that part of Maintenance Road if that holds true. And this is our first. This is our first crack at crack sealing? Is no, it? that's the same year. Two years ago, we did crack sealing as well. I, okay. And that, um, and but, but, long, but in the last, but before that, two years ago, we haven't done it. Before two years, no, no, we didn't. Um, we, uh, like you remember, we, we did consider it. Uh, we didn't think it made uh, financial sense then. Okay. Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's a great program. I think it you know, gives us three additional years on some of the roads. I, just a quick question. How does this 143000 this year compare to the dollar amount spent the prior time we did this program? And will it continue to cover, was the last dollar amount approximately 31 miles as well? Um, it, we did it two phases. I, total dollars, I believe, um, were the same. We did streets like... Uh, and the Webster Highway, a um, couple of neighbor streets, East Dunstable Road, and, uh, and a bunch of residential streets as well. Um, I don't recall the exact mileage. Okay, not, not a problem. And was this particular contractor the same one that did it the prior time? Yes, this is the one that uh, won the contract back then. Very good. Thank sure. you. Sure. Alderman Jenny. Mayor. <coughs> So, uh, Mr. Ducran, I, I uh, forwarded to you uh, an email that I got from a constituent with uh, a negative opinion of, of, of this program. And did you have a chance to review that? And it sounds like from what you're saying that you have a completely different view than, than he does about the effectiveness of this. That's true. I did review your email, Alman Jetty. Um, and I did go by this gentleman's house, which is located at a street that was crack sealed two years ago. And I didn't notice any problems on that street, especially in front of his home. Um, so he must be talking about an experience he had 
in some other location while he was driving, maybe not even in Nashua. Um, so, and, and um, Mr. Patrician will tell you, we've had one complaint from that experience two years ago about the stuff remaining tacky after a little while, after it be, was applied. But aside from that, I don't think we've had any other complaints here. Um, and then if you drive around and look at the streets we've done, uh, you'll see that those streets have really been, you know, the cracks have been t tightened up and all of that. So I think after two years, I think it's, I, w I would say it's a success. And one of the reasons we want to go, go forward. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that there will be an occasion when it may not have been applied properly um, or, or sanded properly um, that, that someone will have that kind of experience. But for the most part, I, I think it's, it's a good program because, because the, the, large, the, the states, the state governments, the federal DOT, federal, um, yeah, federal DOT, they, they use this uh, a lot on the big highways and that shows a lot of confidence in, in this technique. Thank you. Welcome. Anything else? No. Um, all those in motion, or excuse me, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item D. I'll move to consider the hardship request from Michelle Rodriguez to, exca to, to excavate for installation of sewer, water, and gas services for proposed lot subdivision at 711 West Hollis Street approved by the Planning Board March 21st, 2019. So um, the applicants for the, the remaining four items uh, were hardship on excavating within uh, Moratorium Street. They're here and they will speak on behalf of their request. Good evening, Richard Maiden from Maiden and Park Kent. Representing the applicants at uh, property owners at 711 West Hollow Street. 711 West Hollow Street has one existing house and four new houses proposed uh, with a private common driveway servicing it. Uh, we're here to request uh, permission to open up West Hollow Street, which I understand just recently that it was part of the fi a five year moratorium. I'm not sure where we are in that moratorium, but <clears throat> in this particular project, the existing sewer is in the center line of West Hollow Street, which is where we need to connect. The other utilities are right at the curb line on our side of, of West Hollow Street, so that those are, are minimal. But the patch would be 40 feet curb to curb and 80 feet longitudinally on the road that we're requesting. So uh, this project has gone through the zoning board, it's gone through the planning board. It provides some middle income housing that we need in this community uh, and we need to get sewer service to it and, and the only way is to interrupt the road. So that's our request. Any discussion, questions? Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm curious to learn when this, if, uh, assuming the board does move forward and grant this exception, when this work might occur and what impact it might have to traffic in that area? Uh, well, it'll, it'll definitely have uh, some temporary detours. It'll probably take three to four days to install this line to the center line, but be because it's a four lane road, you can maintain traffic uh, because we're only going from one side to the center line, so we'll still have the other, the other two lanes for traffic in either direction. So uh, the immediate impact is like to get the sewer in and things like that would be three or four days. Uh, and there'd be one other day when they would do the final paving, uh, which would be weeks or months later, uh, uh, depending on how everything progresses. So minimal disturbance. We could stipulate outside the uh, peak travel hours, uh, which tend to be uh, uh, seven to eight and, uh, and four to five if, you, if the board is, uh, the commission is, in bothered by that, that, that would uh, keep it out of the peak travel hours and, and minimize the impacts. Thank you. It just, uh, Mr. Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, is, 
and I didn't look at the map, I'll be granted, is 711 West Hall Street up by what we know as Fotines? Yes, it's right next door, okay. almost. And you commented that that was a four lane road? I thought I was confused. Well, is it in lanes? width, it's not four, it's not driving lanes, but it's four lanes in width because there's a center turn lane and things like that and, and shoulders and things like that. Okay. All right, thank you. It's actually 40 feet wide, which is four lanes, curb to curb, okay? Right. But there's only an eastbound, westbound lane on each side with, with the turning lane. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I do have a question. Um, so we have four of these right here. We're spending millions of dollars paving the streets every year. Now, the, le the next three are on smaller streets and... They seem to be mandated by state law in the sense that there have been gas leaks detected and state law requires that these things be, <coughs> that gas leaks be fixed within one year. They're called a, they're calling them a grade one or a grade two gas leak. West Hollis Street is a very heavily traveled street. I don't know about the other commissioners, but I get a lot of complaints about the condition of the streets. And here we are, we spent I don't know how much money on West Hollow Street, heavily traveled, and we're going to compromise the quality of the street uh, two, what, two years before the moratorium is up. It was paved in September, or sometime in 16. It says, but I think it's September or something? Yeah, the 21st. Yeah. 21st of what? Uh, 2016. 21st of what? Yeah. Uh, September. 21st. So September. So we're talking, you know, two and a quarter years early. You, you want me to comment? Yes. All right. This is an observation as a professional engineer that's lived in this city all his life. Part of our problem with our roads and with utility companies, et cetera, cutting into the roads, that the job they do in replacing the patch and compacting the trench is poor. Uh, Soil compaction is supposed to be done in six-foot lifts, not two-foot, three-foot lifts. Throw it in and take the bucket and bang on it and uh, then temporary pave it and wait for vehicles to bounce it down and stuff. That's not how you replace these things. So that's part of the reason why trench replacement and patching is a poor job. In this particular case, uh, there's going to be independent inspection of the project uh, paid for by the developer, but... Uh, uh, under the direction of the city engineer's office. Therefore, the quality of work should be s significantly better, if not ideal. And if you do it right, it doesn't cause a problem. If, if you don't force these contractors to do it right, then you have a problem. So in this particular case, we do have independent inspection answerable to the city engineer's office. So uh, the quality of the work should be significantly better. The next point to be made is, you know, not to quibble, but uh, what's the difference between two years and five years? Uh, I understand. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> we get two or three yes, years but, more. I mean, you know. But it's not that much different. It's not like you just paved it and you're opening it up right away. Uh, so it has two years left on the moratorium. Uh, it's a, as people know, that we have a, a housing market that needs homes, needs moderately priced homes. This is the kind of project, and this is our only way of servicing the project. So these homeowners, these property owners, longtime Nashwins, uh, won't be able to uh, develop their land. Uh, so all I can tell you is it should be better than normal that, that, that you've seen elsewhere that causes you to be concerned. Does the city engineer have a an opinion on this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking him. That's not. I'm asking the city engineer. Can this be patched in a way that it would be the equivalent of what we started with before the project began? Um, Steve Duker, city engineer. Um, this is uh, what we have discussed actually not too long ago. Um, what do we do with what's happening to our patches? As I presented at one meeting not too long ago, our study has shown that the patched pavement does deteriorate faster 
than if not cut into. You must remember that. That was a workshop that we had about a month ago, right? Um, even though our, our restoration standards are tougher than other communities, we have done that comparison. Uh, I think Engineer Maynard is correct that some of our trenches done by utility companies are not done properly. They're not getting the proper compaction. Uh, that's because our ability to give inspection is limited by personnel. Remember that conversation. So we have to step up there, and we have some ideas. Um, so is there a better way of, um, is there a, a, a method for getting it exactly as it was a brand new street? Can you patch and still get back to a point where the entire street is still at a pavement condition index, let's say West Solid Street is probably 85. Um, I, I don't know, there probably is, but that will be even making our strict restoration standards even stricter. Um, so I can't, I can't give you a good answer. Is there, um, well, well, is there any, are there any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Pappas. Well, I, I, I've been pretty consistent. Um, I read, I, I read through a case where um, uh, Manchester and Concord um, took on the um, one of the utilities, and we're asking um, the citizens of Nashua to really fund a lot of money in paving and we're doing it in bonding and again paving is something that deteriorates in value pretty quickly um, and if someone had a gas main break or if their sewer broke I consider that a hardship and I think that we have that five-year moratorium for a reason and even though we do have stricter patching standards um, Clearly, it has been an issue in a condition of our roads. Um, I, think, I think that this board, I think the Board of Aldermen, I think the mayor um, have shown a commitment to wanting to get our roads up to par. And I think by um, granting hardships that aren't really hardships, I, 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 don't, I don't think is, um, it's not something I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do. And I've been pretty consistent. So, thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner, uh, Alderman Jetty lives out that way, don't you? Yes, I live up that way. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Jetty. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the um, uh, I, I've I've long been uh, you know, an advocate of. Um, enforcing the city ordinances and uh, this this ordinance says that um, that uh, construction shall not be permitted on any street paved within the last five years except for emergency or hardship purposes only and only if the conditions uh, that follow are met so I would you know, I, I don't have a vote on here on this uh, on this matter, but I would encourage you to consider whether or not, um, you know, whether or not the conditions are met. You know, is there an an emergency? I I don't think there's an emergency. The question is, is there a hardship? And um, I'd, I'd be interested in, and in if the uh, commissioners are interested, whether what what the applicant feels is the hardship here. That would um, that would enable them to be considered for uh, be permission to uh, to violate the moratorium, and it's only then, if you find that there is a hardship that merits violating the moratorium, it's only then that the the requirements as to how the patch is constructed and all that stuff is is met. If um, you know, if Mr. Maynard says that. You know, the patches that other people are doing are not being properly uh, put in. That's an, that's another issue that f falls to the engineering department to police that and and not approve it 
if it's not done properly. But uh, I think the threshold that has to be met here first is w what is what is the hardship, and I don't know if the applicant has more to say about that or not. Can you address the issue of what is the hardship? I will, but one of the property owners would like to speak to you if he's that's fine. Hi, I'm Gil Dubray, and I live right on the street, right next door to the property. Um, my, my aunt was there for many, many years, and my, my parents grew up on that property, and we've been there forever. And as things were happening, when they, everyone was trying to cut into the street, my, my aunt had just died after everyone, right around the same time everyone was cutting into the street, they will list the property, we really wanted to move it on. But it was decided that uh, we would try to uh, try to wait a little bit and maybe make you know s do a little bit better than the hundred thousand we could have gotten for it at the time, which is I think a normal thing that we all tried to do. And um, um, having lived on this street all this you know time, and you know I've been I've seen a lot of patches put in, and um, you're correct. If the patch is put in poorly, bang. If the manhole is put in poorly, bang. It's annoying. It's very annoying. But having seen patches put in that were perfect, I, know, I can name a couple of companies that did it perfectly. And it was, it was like it was the same street. <laughs> if it's done right, it's done right. So I know that's not the hardship deal, but that's just to address that. Um, and the rest is just that we've been sitting on this a long time. We just really need to move it on. We're all just regular middle class folks who are just trying our best to, we just don't want to sit on another two years to get a waiver. And I guess we just have to sell it for significantly less without the waiver. So that's, I, I don't know if that's a hardship or not, or if that qualifies as one for, for you guys, but that's where we're at. We just want to move it on. Property in question here is a 1.42 acre lot, uh, which the family has held for the last uh, few years. Mr. Dubray is one of the owners uh, uh, of the property. Uh, the only way this property can property can be upgraded and properly utilized is for a sewer connection it's to allow the development of, the, of four new homes. Uh, so that is a hardship to when you don't let, when people are not allowed to uh, use their property uh, as, as the regulations, zoning regulations, and planning regulations allow uh, in this particular case. Uh, Mr. Dukren and his, doesn't have a ton of staff to police all the excavations that occur in, in this community. However, a special stipulation of this particular uh, approval is that the, the applicant, the property owner, uh, shall engage the services of a private third party engineer uh, selected by the city engineer's office to in inspect and certify uh, that the project has been constructed properly. So in that regard, this is a somewhat unusual. This, is, this, is, this kind of stipulation in planning board uh, stip uh, pl approvals has only been recently uh, adopted. And I think this is only the second project where they put that stipulation for, for private third party engineering firm to provide inspection services because the city's, for whatever reason, the city engineer's office uh, is overwhelmed with that kind of particular work. Uh, I understand this, this is only one. In this one case, who is that engineer? Huh? Is the, are, you the, are you the third party engineer? Yes, this is a new idea that uh, people on the planning board, or a couple of people on the board, board have been uh, lobbying for for about the last several months that they, they want private, they want third party private engineers to be inspecting particular projects. Not every project, but projects of uh, particular magnitude or complication. Uh, this is a site plan with four homes. It's not a, it's not a little one into two subdivision with one home being constructed on a, on a Lot. There's road construction here, there's drainage, and, and 
items like that and, uh, and a driveway, a new driveway into West Hollow Street. So it has, although it's not overly complicated, it has a lot of items that need to be done properly. And normally the city engineer's office would have an inspector on the job <coughs> periodically, but they do not have enough staffing and, and they just can't handle these things. So this is an idea of the planning board to get a better handle to make sure these projects are done better. Part of the problem is we have the full gamut of contractors out there from the, the ones you see every year, year in and year out that don't go anywhere. Those, they tend to do a quality job. Then we got the running the mills from out of town, come in for one time project and you never see them again. And they do sloppy jobs because they underbid the project. They cut corners and things like that. So we have all of those typical problems. Have um, you just selected the contractor in this case? No, we have not. But it's, uh, it's one of the leading candidates is Jennings Construction, who's been around in town doing work. They, they have an office in Hollis, but they've been doing work in the city of Nashville for 30 or 40 years. Uh, they are recognized as a quality contractor uh, in that regard. So, but, and, but more importantly is the, is the third party inspections. Uh, by a, a licensed engineer, that's more important. The other complication in here is, for whatever it's worth, if, uh, if these property owners are not allowed to develop their property, then they're gonna be doing abatement uh, from, t from their taxes because you've precluded them from doing anything for several years. So, uh, you know, that's a messy situation, but that's part of the problem that uh, now that they have a, a project to prove, it, theoretically, that their tax assessment goes way up, but if they can't implement their approval uh, and we have to go back to the board in two years or something like that, they get reapproved. So that interim period, we have essentially a, a, a property of minimal value. So, and so that, that's a side complication, but that's, that's part of the hardship, so you have to go for an abatement. So I am reasonably confident uh, that with the third party inspection and the emphasis of, of the city engineer's office, et cetera, that the, the replacement patch will be every bit as good as what's out there now. So, uh, and, and again, whether we allow them to go this year, next year, or in two years after the five years up, is, it's not gonna change the quality of the road as long as it's done properly to proper specs and, and is inspected on a regular basis uh, that that happens. I, hope, I know this from first-hand experience. Uh, and part of my engineering background is I was a field inspector enforcing these kinds of things and I, and I know the difference between slotty work, shoddy work, and good work. But, uh, you know, and as I say, I see it all the time. You cannot throw two feet of dirt in a trench and expect it to compact. It has to be in six-inch layers uh, and compact it each layer, not throw it all in the trench and then try to compact it all the way because the compaction doing? does not go down beyond six to eight inches well, in the that trench. So that's part of the problem, the shoddy construction practices that the city engineer's office is not able to keep up with. So. All right. Um, well, of course, one problem we're faced with is that this is not a street with a 100. Excuse me? This is not a street with like 100 cars a day. Oh, I understand by. that. It's tens of thousands, whatever, 10,000 cars a day or whatever. This is a big street. Um, would you be willing to meet with a city engineer and with Mr. Patrician? Have you met with a city engineer about this? Uh, we, we, this particular issue? No. Yeah. Uh, but this particular in general, we've talked about it because. Would you be willing? Mayor, I was going to make a motion. Would We've got a motion. I, I, I was actually, I, I didn't see the hardship. I was going to make a motion to deny the hardship because I, I, I've not, I've heard, a, I, I think that we've already heard a lot about the compaction rates. Um, but I, I, number one, I didn't see that the hardship. Um, and I, I, w I was going to make a, mo a motion to deny. And I think we, could, I'd like to up and down, up or down vote on that. Well, we can get the up or down vote. Um, would you be willing to meet with the city engineer and with Mr. Patrician to 
talk in detail about what you intend to do to patch the street and to convince. Oh, this guy. I don't know his background, though. <laughs> uh, he's the uh, assistant uh, superintendent of public works. Oh, okay. Sure, of course. Um, and it is involved in a lot of this work. Yes. So would you be willing to meet with them to see if you can convince them that you will be able to do this in a way that will not will preserve the quality of the street substantially as it currently exists? Oh, for sure, for sure we can meet, uh, and we'll try, we'll try and we'll to convince them. So that's a prerequisite before you vote? Is that what you're suggesting? That's what I'm suggesting. I think that's reasonable. All right. The motion currently on the floor is to deny the request. Um, any other discussion? Well, Commissioner Ackerman. Mr. Mayor, I do like your approach of having a conversation with the, the third party engineer. Um, I think it, it does make sense. I do hope that over the last conversations we've had over the last 30 to 60 days on subcommittees about the degradation of the pavement program and the sliding scales that we're going to be poised as a city engineering department soon to have those inspectors in place because I think we're going to start seeing more and more of this uh, cutting into pavement type of requests moving forward. All right, well, I'm going to vote against the motion to deny, but will not vote to grant at this point because I want to hear what you and what the result of your meetings with Mr. Ducran and Mr. Patrician are in terms of can we really, what level of confidence can we have that the street Understood, would? understood. So um, right now, the still the pending motion is to deny. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. So that motion passes. Is there a motion to hold this request pending the a meeting between Mr. Maynard, Mr. Ducrin, and Mr. Patrician regarding the restoration, the potential restoration of this patch. I make a motion to table this until that conversation occurs, whether it be 30 days or the next available BPW commissioners meeting. Discussion on that motion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. And the, that motion passes two to one. Thank you, folks. All right. Item E. I move to consider hardship request from Liberty's utility to, to excavate for installation of re replacement gas lines of Burke Street, which has a five-year moratorium. Um, discussion? Uh, Commissioner Ackerman. Certainly. Um, in speaking with some of the other people involved with the Board of Public Works commissioners and um, the uh, deputy director, did I get your title right? Assistant director. Assistant director, yeah. okay. My apologies. Um, we're obviously paving quite a bit of streets, and as I understand it, many of these um, programs for I've been there I've been there on the receiving end of a gas leak um, and it's a lot of anxiety if you will as a, as a resident fortunately in my particular case um, the, the leak was at the um, is it called the pump next to the house is that what it's the gas meter if you will and then eight weeks later they came back and they found another leak but it was still on my property Quite a bit of anxiety, making, but they assured me that it was uh, a, sa a safe, uh, safe at the time. But they took immediate activity. So, I think we're going to start seeing quite a bit of this. But it does sound like there's a, a state law that says you have to address this within 12 months. Hi, good evening, uh, commissioners, aldermen, and mayor and staff. Mm -hmm. of the uh, Department of Public Works. Uh, Brian Frost for Liberty Utilities. 
Yes, uh, there is state and federal pipeline laws and Liberty's own internal operating procedures and practices uh, that we grade each leak based on the risk to the public and structures and then repair it. Um, leaks that represent an immediate hazard to the public or to a building are repaired immediately. Uh, leaks that represent a potential hazard are monitored and repaired within six months or within the same calendar year. And uh, leaks that uh, do not represent a hazard are monitored and repaired and we have uh, metrics that we've agreed to with the state to minimize those um, and repair them on an ongoing basis. Um, Commissioner Pappas. Um, I'm, uh, I, I am concerned about our roads, but I think there's a difference between a gas leak and someone wanting to get every last dime they can squeeze out of a, out of a property. So I certainly would, um, I, 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 I approve of, um, of, of going into the road um, to fix these gas leaks. Um, and I, I understand um, that sometimes, even if it's not a leak, that if we have a newer road, that if, 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 if um, there's some tie-ins, I, I fully understand um, that you may, that the utilities might need access to the road and, you know, certainly nobody um, wants, you know, wa wants to deal with um, the horror of a gas explosion. So um, yes. I certainly would say. I can, would you mind if I could comment on item E? Item E is. Yeah, go ahead, sure, go ahead. Uh, we've been working with the city engineer's office. We work with them on an ongoing basis uh, to replace aging infrastructure before paving is completed to minimize future leaks right. later and disturbance of pavements. Uh, at Alds and Burke, Burke was paved a few years ago. Uh, the pipe there has been replaced. Uh, the piping on Alds has not been. The city is proposing to pave right. Alds Street um, so we need to make that, within right. that 20 foot at the seam, we need to make that connection. Right. Um, we do, unlike I think the characterizations made earlier, our work is inspected by the city engineer's office. Our internal policies and field practices, we do use um, compaction equipment, you know, intended for use compaction equipment on our trenches in six inch lifts. We don't dump two foot, you know, buckets of soil. Uh, we do periodic dynamic cone penetrator testing of our trenches um, in agreement uh, with Mr. Dukren's office to check for compaction results before uh, repaving and final restoration. This is similar to what we did on Concord Street before we replace the pipes um, in advance of the city's paving. So. Yes. so in the first instance here in Burke, you're trying to just make the connection between Burke and Alls, where right. we want to pave Alls. Yes. And then the subsequent ones, you've actually encountered leaks where you want to go in and fix yes. pipes that, uh, so that the leak doesn't develop into something more serious. Yes, I can explain that. Um, Motion F, um, sorry to be asking, this is, it's labeled an after the fact. On all of these, we, Liberty Utilities leak surveys every street before the city's paved and then repairs any leaks. We also, every winter, uh, we continuously drive the city uh, while frost is in the ground. I th you might have heard about how water main breaks occur during the winter because of frost. That is possible with any underground pipe, including gas. So Liberty does have a program where we have vehicles driving around the city every day during the winter um, to drive our system to find any leaks. Um, the leak on Shasta Court was a grade one leak, which means that once we found it, uh, we determined it was could present an immediate hazardous condition, so it was repaired immediately during the winter. Um, the other leaks for item G are grade two leaks that would need to be repaired this summer. 
statement that they were found in a similar manner during the winter <coughs> patrol. Um, and just so I recall the parliamentary situation, uh, did Commissioner Pampas, did you make a motion with respect to item E? I think I think I did. You did, yeah. right? To approve it? Yeah, and, 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 and I, you know, I, I, I have noticed um, that, that Libby Utilities do, they, they do a good job at the contractors that they hire and, um, and, and, and in, in, in difficult traffic situations, I think that um, they also do a good job at, at trying to keep the traffic moving at, 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 a, safe, at a safe rate and um, I, would, I would hope that others would um, follow their lead because I have noticed that, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pappas. The, Mr. Dukren's office also helps us immensely with input to traffic plans. Okay. So the motion is to approve item E. Any further discussion? Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in the past, um, city engineer, Mr. Ducrane has reassured the board that the utilities company do a good job of working with his office, that type of thing. But I was just specifically curious, are they looking, Liberty Utilities in this particular case, looking at our 2019 paving program specifically to make sure that there is no, what is this, a class two leak? I, I, a class two leak on any of those particular locations that you might not be coming to us until September, but know about it now, that type of thing? Uh, yes, we do before any paving occurs. Uh, the city engineer's office is uh, relayed a list of the streets for this summer's paving, and we are currently out in the field leak surveying it. Uh, we do a walking survey, uh, so it's an exhaustive type search, and we will repair any leaks before it's repaved. And that's why we trust our city engineer. Thank you. All right, the pending motion was to approve item E. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I move to consider the after the fact hardship request from, from Liberty Utilities for the ex excavation to repair a grade one leak in Shasta Court, which has a five year moratorium. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item G. I move to consider the hardship request for U Liberty Utilities, the, exca the excavation to repair four grade two leaks located at 16 Shelley Drive, 23 White Plains Drive, 60 Cox Street, 8 Chapman in Shakespeare Road at, and 122 Lill Street. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, wastewater, item A. I'm fine. Okay. I'll move to approve user warrants as presented. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Administration, item A. I move to accept and pl place on file the March 2019 budget transfers. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B. I'll move to approve the fence and wall permit application as presented. Discussion? Commissioner Pappas. Um, what I didn't see, and I, I might have overlooked it, so I saw the I saw the application, which I think is a, which I think is a great idea. Um, my question is, do we do it for every single fence? For example, I just replaced a fence. Um, it actually it was it was my neighbor's fence, and we we, we, we split it, and then um, part of the front part in the middle of my driveway, I had to replace that. So is it just for new fences or is it, do we have some sort of a guideline as to how far off from the road or is everyone gonna have to do a fence application? Well, I think uh, it is just fences along the right of way, the, the parallel. So just right -of -way. towards the. That could be in the right of way potentially. 
okay. parallel the street. Okay. So, but so if you're just you and your neighbor. There's no right. Okay. No, you know, okay. There's no public. So, so that's correct. But but let's say somewhere in my front yard, I I have no I am which I I wouldn't want to put what looks like a wall around my house. But let's just say that I did. In different areas of the city, there's a different right of way. And, and I, remember, I remember asking about it and saying, well, is it eight feet, is it 10 feet, is it 20 feet? And I wasn't getting the runaround. I mean, I got, I got an honest answer is, ooh, it really varies from place to place, so. Uh, Andy Patricia, Assistant Director. Um, now that we're gonna get into these applications and stuff, people are gonna have to come in and fill these out. Um, we are going to be going out and checking the area to make sure that they're putting it in the right place, I believe. Right, Engineer Dukin? Yes, Steve Dukin. Uh, I'd like to say yes to that, but um, there's an existing ordinance that we talked about before that requires anyone putting in a fence adjacent to a public street um, should come in and check with the city engineer's office to demonstrate that they are putting the fence or the wall or any other object in the right location, that, which means on their property. That exists today. Um, however, it's not well known to the public and the permit is, is not going to be beefing up that requirement. Um, can we go out every time to do a survey to find bounds and so on? I mean, that's, that's, that'll be a mammoth task. Uh, for surveyors, because sometimes those things don't exist out there, and then there's research to be done at the county and so on. Um, I think we can, for, for the most part, we can reasonably show where the right of way is. And um, so we will help the applicant in identifying where that is, and probably lean on the side of caution where it will be on the private property rather than risk it being in the right of way. I, I think we can, you know, safely say that can happen than to actually perform surveys for every request. So let's say someone has a sidewalk in front of the street. I mean, I, 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 I don't mean to be a jerk, but I'm just trying to think in terms of so that we don't get into a, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to do the best we can. But do, can we say in a general rule X number of feet from a sidewalk? Because I know that sometimes you have more grass in front of the sidewalk. Right. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I hate to get into the weeds, but we kind of have to. Um, there are rule of, rules of thumb, but you can't really, you know, give that as, hey, you can put your fence there. Obviously, some more investigation is necessary every time. But, yeah, generally... Um, the back of the sidewalk is where the right of way line is. Um, but not always. Not always. So that's why some checking will be necessary. Uh, in the older part of the city, your know, residential streets were about 40 feet, 40 to 45 feet wide, and the sidewalks were placed such that the back is the, the right of way line. Um, the newer subdivisions, the right of way width is 50 feet. And we push to have the sidewalk um, at the, the right-of-way line also. Um, but then there are places where there are no sidewalk, and then you have a sidewalk being built, and you put it in a location of convenience to avoid a fence, to avoid um, shrubbery or light poles and so on. And that's where you, you know, those locations you really want to check uh, to make sure that it's, it's in the right location. Um, Do we have a plan as to how, are, are we, are, are we going to let, say, the fence companies know? Do we have a plan as to how, as I said, I would never would think to, you know, put a fence in the front of my house so it would look like a, a wall, but, you know, people have the, it's their property, they have the right to do as they wish, but. Well, the intention is to first get to these fence companies that do work here to make sure that they know there's a permit requirement requiring all the things uh, on the form. Um, yeah, we have to reach out, reach out to them first. Um, but we definitely have to also s 
reach out to homeowners because some people do their own work. Oh, yes. That's true. Right. <coughs> Uh, I just want to say that this, you know, what happened, what they did here was just change some of the wording. You guys actually did approve this a while back, this um, fence application. So oh, it's been, I don't, I don't recall. It's been a bit. Okay. Yeah. This, this is just a change in the language that legal had okay. wanted to add to it. I wanted to point out to uh, Mayor, you mentioned uh, this permit only talks about uh, fences adjacent to a roadway. I think no, it includes other fences as well. When it when the fences uh, is not in the um, going to be adjacent to the right of way, the building department has to get involved um, because public works will only have jurisdiction along the roadway. Uh, the form does have. If you look at it, it talks about fences on the side or the rear as well. There's a a spot for that as well. Well, no, a fence on the rear or the. It's not adjacent to a roadway. If it's um, no more than six feet tall, it does not require a building permit, does it? It doesn't, um, but the form was constructed such that it does ask for fences other than the, the frontage. Um, if, if the intention was only for frontage fences, then maybe the form has to be further modified. And, and that I mean fences that are frontage fences as well as fences over six feet. Yeah, I think you need a variance for something over six feet. Yeah, but six feet, you, you don't need any. If you're not adjacent to a screen. Right, but absolutely, but I think if I recall correctly, this was an attempt to <coughs> ensure that we no longer had uh, situations that occurred similar to what we've seen over the last six months come yeah. before the board. And I think that this is a, a fine approach to this. And I think very quickly, the department that they bring this to or apply will see that it's a back fence and may even do, I don't know what the, is it a three-day turnaround? Is that what I'm saying? Three-day turnaround. It can be that, yes. I, I think it's a, a great way to protect the city, the city, the residents, and uh, people that are in traffic. So. I, I see no reason to delay this particular piece of the puzzle. All right, well, the motion pending is to approve the application. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, now we have item C, the director's report. The assistant director is going to give the director's report. Uh, due to the director not being here uh, this month, there will be no director's report, but it'll be a nice long one for you guys next next month. So there's no assistant director's report. <laughs> no, at this time, there's no assistant director's report. All right, no directors or assistant directors report. Commissioner comments. Any comments from the commissioners? Um, Commissioner Pappas. Um. So 10 years ago, um, after, after I was inaugurated, um, <coughs> I remember um, someone coming up to me, a member of the public, and said, so just so you know, we're going to, you know, that um, and it was, it, was, it was just, it was a private citizen. It was no, nobody involved in city government. Um, the deal is that, that um, Conway Arena would really like to have, we, we would really like to have another um, sheet of ice, and it would seem to work out well since we're kind of overgrowing, we're kind of um, overgrowing the um, street department building. And it would be convenient to have everyone centrally located. And, um, I didn't, I, I didn't think much of it um, because a lot of times we make plans and those plans don't happen. Um, a couple years after that, the city had bought some abutting homes um, near the landfill and um, the argument was made from area residents, you know, 
we have all those trucks. I mean, I, I actually don't think that the trash, they, they did say the trash trucks, but I don't think that, you know, obviously you live near a landfill, you kind of expect that. But we also, they also had a lot of other commercial vehicles. And I think that there was a, a great bit of angst from um, folks in that area um, when we did purchase those homes um, that I think have been, I think they were set on, they were put on fire by the um, fire department. I think, I think that's how they dealt with those homes. And um, so there was, a, there was a lot of upset and, um, not, and, and just not knowing what's going on. And I, I can't recall, I think that it was, I can't require, remember it was required in the legislation or the purchase. Um, I, uh, Mayor, I think that you may have been involved in that. And that folks were promised that we wouldn't have um, a city building put up there, which uh, to, to my recollection, I can't, rec I think it might have been on those it lots. Was on, it was on the two, on the right, two parcels. Right, right, yeah, no, in, in, yeah, in, in that. Um, that were bought, bought at the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that it was, yeah, I couldn't recall if it was in the purchase and sale or if it was, if it was legislation. I think it was in the legislation that okay. approved the purpose. Okay. Oh, approved the purpose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I couldn't, as I said, I didn't, I couldn't remember which piece it was written in. Um, but part of I, I, I know um, when when the city um, purchased Burke Street, um, you know, part of part of my upset in 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 considering that for move is I I didn't think that. Um, residents there had um, really been informed. I, I understand initially when we were going through the purchase process, we really couldn't make it public. Um, but I, I, I really think that if we start making, we start making plans, I think before any money should, or is, is spent, that we should really, um, we should really let residents know, not just area residents, um, but but just just generally in the city. And it's it's it sounds um, it sounds kind of strange. Um, I thought of this on Earth Day. Um, my kids wanted to go through a whole day of just not getting rid of you know not having any trash for the day, and. I started to think that sometimes I have concerns that we might just be tossing buildings away, like they're um, things that can be, just be thrown away. And um, I, I really would um, like to see us, before we make any moves, to, to um, really, number one, include the public, and um, number two, think of outside of the box, um, outside of the box solutions. Um, I think it, it a couple of meetings, I, uh, C Commissioner Ackerman is a, uh, he's, be, he's been around the city a few years. And um, I thought it was a really interesting concept that I thought about when they're saying to put a second floor onto the street department. I, I, thought, I thought that was, that was really interesting um, concept and, um, it is unfortunate how that area we were kind of put in a we're kind of put in a box by other by by other administrations' decision, you know, to have given a you know to to have given away the land to the Y really seemed like it would seem like a like a good idea, but when you think of you know that's a that's a big that's a big chunk of land, and then you know Stellos, I think that I don't I think that. Stellis is very well placed. I, 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 I understand that. And then since we have all that stuff there, well then the skateboard park. And I, I really would like us to um, try to come up with really inclusive plans as, as, we, as we move forward. And um, I have to say, I really, it may not be ideal, I know from other standpoints, to, 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 to not be centrally located, 
The upside, I would argue the upside to not being centrally located um, is that then not one area of the city gets stuck with all kinds of traffic. Um, because because that's always kind of been um, that's always kind of been a concern of mine and I also was thinking in terms of when I the police department in the police commission I noticed were in front of um, the Board of Aldermen and they were looking it was it was not a cheap it was not a cheap fix they they were um, trying to 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 get a ventilation system and I think that um, Sometimes we take a back seat and almost act like we're second class to, to, to other divisions and, you know, maybe we don't deserve a new ventilation system. I mean, you know, quite honestly, it, I, I don't know, you know, I guess my question would be which is worse, the facilities at Greeley Park or the ones at the street department. Um, my guess is Greeley Park would, that would probably be I, I, I think that they would be condemned if, if the city didn't own them. And um, I really hope moving forward um, when we're coming up with solutions that we can be inclusive and really listen um, to each other and also to um, the public in general and, and, and to try to um, be, be cognizant that you know whether whether you live in an area that's all residential or whether you live in an area that's commercial these these are people's homes and and um you know you, you try to get to work every day and then you know then you're going to deal you know you're dealing with extra truck traffic and that sort of thing and um i think we should be sensitive to that and and i also think that we should be sensitive to, to the fact that um we're not doing ourselves any favor, I mean, as a, a division, I'm, I'm talking, um, or our employees by just saying, oh, it's, no, it's okay, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just wait, we'll just wait, we'll just wait. Because I think that, you know, when, when, when you don't upkeep your home, it turns to trash. And um, I, I, I really hope that we can move forward with, with an open mind, as I said, both listening amongst each other and um, in listening to the public. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you. I'm not sure if this is the, the right place to address this, but I had sent an email to the director <coughs> earlier uh, today about a particular street. I had a residential inquiry. Should I take that up with Mr. DeCrane after the meeting? It's about Beard Street and um, which got reconstructed and, and paved in 2018, getting repaved again when Auburn Street got ripped up three times and is a mass of potholes today. Is that something I should do here or uh, post-meeting? Um, well, certainly Mr. Uh, Ducran is here and would be glad to talk to you either, I guess, now or after the meeting, isn't it? Okay. okay. There we go. Uh, Steve Ducran, quick answers. So, BH Street, got its base paving because we had sewer and utility work. And what's proposed this year is final paving. So it has not been repaved. This is just finishing the job. Okay. The adjacent street, Auburn. Yes. It has a low condition index. Um, it had gas work, so that's what the ripped up was describing. So gas work is done. We have a, um, suspect sewers, old sewers, so we are doing investigation on the sewers and as well as coordinating with, with Penichuk as to any required water work before that gets on the paving list. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other commissioner's comments? Alderman Jetty. So I would, um, if you would indulge me, I would like to talk about this, uh, what you've done, uh, what you did tonight about the, uh, the request for, uh, the hardship request at 7-Eleven West Hollow Street. I, I, I want to point, you know, forgive me for being so bold as to point out to the commissioners that, uh, you know, that this is regulated by ordinance. And the ordinance, um, you know, I think, I think at, at at your uh, 
uh, instigation, the, or the ordinance was passed by the Board of Aldermen imposing this five-year moratorium because uh, of the problem that we've experienced in the past of you know, paving streets and then ripping them up uh, a short time afterwards and that um, in a, an acknowledgement <coughs> that, no, that no patch is perfect and that there's a deterioration that occurs. And so this ordinance was passed in, in order to try to alleviate that problem. And the ordinance, um, uh, so, so the petitions that you had before you tonight, um, you know, they all, this is a minor thing, that, but they all refer to section 280, uh, the revised ordinance is 285-13, section A. Uh, it's actually section G that talks about this, um, uh, that this, uh, this so-called emergency or hardship exception. Uh, in section G, uh, you know, it says except that construction shall not be permitted on any street paid within the past five years, except for emergency or hardship purposes only. So, so number one, the you know, there's no construction allowed within five years. You know, except for emergency. So we had you know the gas company. Uh, you had leaks, and that sounds like an emergency to me. They're labeled hardship requests, but they should, I think, probably a matter of semantics, but it's really an emergency request. The other one was, there was no, there's no emergency involved. It's just a hardship. So before you start talking about um, the quality of the patch and, and suggesting that the applicant can meet with the, the engineer and come up with a, a higher quality patch. Um, you know, you're jumping ahead of the requirement that you first find that there's a hardship. Now, I don't know if what you heard tonight, if you thought that there was a hardship expressed, that's within your discretion. But I, I think it's a mistake to say to applicants you know, meet with the engineer and see if you can come up with a plan for a better patch. I think that's inviting future applicants to say, we don't have an emergency, we really don't have a hardship, except we'd like to, we'd like to maximize the uh, potential profit that we get from the property. Um, uh, but, you know, we're gonna offer you a deal here. We're gonna make a super patch and uh, allay your concerns. So I, I think that's 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 going that's a slippery slope. I think if you want the city to say instead of a five-year moratorium, we'll allow you to to con, you know to do new construction on 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 newly paved roads, uh, you know if you meet certain standards of of patchwork, then we ought to change the ordinance and say that. But as long as the ordinance says you know, no, you can't, you know, you can't excavate on newly paved property within five years, then that's, that's what it ought to be, unless there's an emergency or a hardship. And, and uh, you know, there's no definition of hardship in this ordinance, but there are plenty of definitions of hardship in the zoning ordinances. Um, and uh, so I just, uh, forgive me if I've, overstated my Maybe welcome right. I mean, here I, but uh, I think when the ZBA finds hardship a lot of times I think what is the hardship I don't see it but I saw this as a borderline hardship really and I, I haven't decided to actually grant this I mean I don't know I mean maybe we are leading people down the primrose paths that we're not going to but I mean you're arguing that there isn't a hardship and therefore a super patch doesn't fulfill the ordinance or Uh, maybe you're right, um, and uh, but I did see it as kind of a borderline hardship, um, and that if maybe if they could, repair, I asked the assistant here. You know, do you think they you have confidence that they can restore this to the current condition? And he said, uh, you know, they may be able to. Or so I guess that seemed to be a reasonable middle course. 
at least at that moment, but maybe you're right. Maybe it should be the now. Mr. Chair. Of course, you are, a f and as I said at the time, I mean, it's also a heavily traveled street, so, you know, it's we should be careful with it. It's not like it's uh, Shasta Court or whatever, right? you know, where you've probably got 50 cars a day. This is, uh, you know. Right, and, and there's, we're facing the uh, the possibility that uh, Pepperell is going to um, uh, license uh, one of their quarries to uh, to be a um, I forget the the right word, but a, a place where where fill can be deposited from all over the uh, all over the state of Massachusetts, and so they're they're talking about uh, you know these large jump, dump trucks these super large dump trucks at the rate of you know as many as 10 or more an hour going I think down that's that that's going to be turned down but no. well I hope it is turned down but we have no control over that it's 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 within the the Massachusetts Department um, of Environmental Services but you know e even without that there's a lot of uh, this is on the road to the landfill, there are heavy trucks that are going to the landfill every day, so that road does get a, a beating. Um, but yes, yes, Mayor, I, w I just wanted to add something um, um, regarding this topic. Um, Alderman Jerry, um, you know, has truly pointed that this this board has the the responsibility of proving whether it is a or determining whether there's a hardship or not, and the applicant. The burden of proof of that hardship is on them. Um, as, you, as you stated, I believe hardship is pretty much subjective in most cases. Uh, you will see at the next board meeting another request from a major development that's been planned um, in the city to want to cut, to put utilities in a street that was paved just last year. What street? Temple Street, and and so therefore we have to be consistent in our application of the rules. Um, I don't think that the board is likely going to deny that because of the significance of that development. Um, Do you remember the address? Would you aware on Temple? It's seventy-eight, the Corriver Ruthier property. Oh yes. Yes. So I, I cautioned him. I was at a meeting today, a kind of a planning meeting, and I said, "You guys don't know. You've got to go before the board of public works and request your your waiver for you know the moratorium street before you go too far down the road." <coughs> so they intend to come in here for the, at the next meeting. Okay, thank you for the heads up. Right, Commissioner Good. Pappas. I I would I would just. Um, con concur with the city engineer and um, with Alderman Jetty. I, I do think that these rules are in place for a reason, and I think that we've been far too generous um, with granting hardships. Um, I think short of leaks, I think the only other time I voted for a hardship, there was, there were, there was like three months left to the five-year moratorium and I thought that it was better off for the citizens of Nashua if that road if 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 the road if if the side to side patch was done and I really think mayor it's it's great that you that you have made the commitment of of funds to pave the roads and just because I I understand wanting to get every last dime you can from a property but I think it's I think it's the Nashua residents and the taxpayers they got that get stuck holding the bag because you cut into a road it really it, it really it really every time you cut into it it, it weakens the road I, I read I read through um, a lot of material prepared by a, um, a engineer with a, a gentleman that a PhD in engineering and I, I I think we're I think we have I think we're going down the slippery slope and I hope that we can get a little bit more strict with our rules that's that's how I feel. But anyway, thank you, uh, Commissioner Ackerman. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I thought we kind of addressed the degradation of pavement through the, the subcommittee that I know that you were unable to, to, to make one of them, but I thought we addressed that and that that additional scaling fee would cover the cost of that. And to Alder Benjetti's point, if a change in the ordinance may be required, one of the things that I was thinking during Richard Maynard's commentary is that perhaps a thought process of if we do allow this is to have the resident or the developer um, put a bond up to ensure that the road is going to maintain itself five years later and then get that money back provided that it doesn't need any additional maintenance. That might be a win-win approach. I don't know, just a thought. All right, any other comments? Could I, could I just today? ask uh, Engineer Dukran, the, the uh, Temple Street, what, what's the time frame? When was it paved and when, was the, when would the moratorium expire? So it was paved last year uh, uh -huh. towards, uh, I guess, you know, summer, fall. And so you have uh, at least four and a half years left. And it seems that this developer wants to get all the approvals this year so they can go into construction. These are some major buildings, residential buildings they're planning. The rail yard district, so-called. All right, any other comments? Um, if not, we will go to personnel. Uh, item A. All right, wait a minute. Where are we? Is it the motion to go into private? Oh, here we go. To accept the resignation of Andrew Carlino, effective April 14th, 2019. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B. To unseal the public non-public minutes for personnel from the Board of Public Works meeting of March 28, 2019. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> Is there a motion pertaining to a non-public session? Yes. I move by roll call that the board go into a non-public session pursuant to RSA 91A3, Section 2B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Mayor Donches? Yes. Commissioner Ackerman? Yes. Commissioner Pappas? Yes. Uh, motion passes, and we will go into non-public sessions to consider personnel items. 